Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Welcome to Brilliance Business TV, conversations with leading experts in business. I am your host, Mark Stephen Pooler. We have another incredible guest today, Scott Keezer. Writing is such an important skill to have to get our message across correctly, to convert leads, to make more sales. Writing is so, so important. And I know this first and first hand from the business that I do. So I'm really looking forward to a conversation with Scott today. Before I bring Scott into the broadcast, I just want to make an official shout out to our show sponsors, Craig Shelley, Beverly Hills, Luxury Watches and Fine Jewellery at craigshelley.com. Com. We're streaming live on mspnewsglobal.com. We're also on the E360 TV network under Fresh Takes on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube. Let's bring in our incredible guest, Scott Kayser. Scott, welcome to Brilliance Business TV. No, oh, thank, thank you, Mark. What a lovely introduction. I'm delighted to be here. It's an honour and a privilege. I'm really, I'm really forward looking to forward to a conversation with you, Scott. Yeah, me too. I would like you to go back a little bit because we will really go in deep about writing and the importance of it. Just mm-hmm. take a, us back a little bit of your past and background. What has led you to the work you're doing today? Okay, uh, yeah, Mark, I'm very happy to do that. Um, I hope you don't mind me me taking you back to actually the age of six. Uh, I remember at the age of six when I was, I think I was in the, in the Montessori school in Notting Hill Gate in London, it's where I grew up. A beautiful place to grow up, by the way. And um, I remember writing a story called I Am a Shoe. And <laughs> I imagined being a, a shoe on the end of somebody's foot. And I can't remember. I probably got the, the story somewhere in the, in, you know, gathering dust in the garden shed. But I seem to recall that um, I got walked a long way and then I got kicked off into the into the gutter or a stream or something. I ended up floating out to sea. And then I can't remember what happened. So probably a deeply Freudian um, story. But clearly at six, I was kind of using my imagination a bit. And the reason I quote that is because I think I've always loved and been fascinated by language. Um, So when I, a few years later, about six or seven years later, when I was about 12, I was in a, a prep school a private school in Notting Hill Gate, and it really wasn't a, a great school. Um, rather a dodgy headmaster as well, but you know, I'm not going to go there. And my my parents decided to take me away from that school because they realised that I just wasn't I wasn't thriving, I wasn't learning, I wasn't really studying. And um, I don't know how they did it actually, but they got me a place in probably. Well, almost certainly one of the most exclusive private tutorials in London, if not Britain, uh, which was run by an incredible man called um, Christopher Trevor Roberts, uh, affectionately known as TR. Trevor Roberts was his double barreled surname. And he ran a tutorial school in the Vale of Health in Hampstead in North London, uh, overlooking the Hampstead Ponds. And I was there for about two terms. And he taught English, Latin, geography, maths, I think biology as well. And he had a couple of other teachers come in uh, for like French. And there was another another subject. And he was just he was without a doubt an incredible, inspirational teacher. And you know what, Mark, they say you never forget a great teacher. Yes. And as long as I live, I shall never forget TR because. What he did was it's like he sliced the top of my head off and threw some Sentex in and just exploded my love of learning. 
And what I particularly fell in love with was Latin. Uh, you know, obviously a dead language, but um, I just absolutely adored Latin. And what that gave me was an understanding of the building blocks of language, because it's a very, very structured, disciplined language. And I absolutely adored it. I thrived on it. And as a result of just two terms with, with TR, who, by the way, just a few years before, had been the private tutor to the British royal family, that's how highly he was regarded. And, and within just two terms with this amazing man, I got into Westminster School, one of the best schools in the world uh, that lies in the precincts of Westminster Abbey. And then I kind of that really catapulted me eventually into Oxford and, and just continued my love of learning and, and writing particularly. Um, I, you know, I, I loved being at Westminster School, They're just surrounded by all that. In fact, I discovered just the other day that Westminster School was founded in the 11th century before the Norman Conquest in 1066. And so being immersed in that historic environment, uh, embedded and reinforced and deepened my love of learning and language and history and it, I, it was, I, I, listen, I fully acknowledge it was a very, very privileged three or four years for which I'm yeah, very, very, very grateful and, and humble about. And because of that, it enabled me to get into Oxford where I did French and German. So I did modern languages as a degree. And I had a year abroad as, a, as a, an English assistant in Paris. So I still, I'm still fluent in French. And then, I mean, so cut a long story short, I, I did a number of corporate roles, including, I have to say, being being the world's worst account executive in an ad agency for J. Walter Thompson on some very lucrative accounts like Kellogg's and Roundtree Macintosh and stuff. But I should always have been on the third floor, which is where the creatives were and the art directors, you know, taking drugs, drinking champagne, having affairs and writing lots of amazing copy that won you know, <laughs> award design awards. Lots of awards. awards. But I was kind of, I was a suit and I was really rubbish at that. So anyway, long story short, I've, the first sort of few years of my career were pretty disastrous, if I'm honest. And I, I ended up going to Australia with a, an Australian girlfriend at the time uh, to Melbourne. And I did a few sort of bum jobs, as you do. I worked in a bar. I worked as a labourer. Uh, I did a few other things. And then I kind of, I can't even remember how it happened, but I bludged my way into um, a PR company. And I ended up writing all their copy for their press releases. In fact, we, it was a marketing agency more than a PR company. And I wrote uh, radio commercials, below-the-line copy, merchandising copy, I became their main copywriter and I absolutely loved it. I realized I was good at it. It was easy and I made good money. So I did that for about three years. And then when I came back to London, uh, minus the girlfriend, I have to, I have to say, <laughs> um, I had a portfolio of, of some good work. And I got a job uh, in Soho with an amazing um, contract publishing house called Ford Publishing run by two former Oxford, Oxford University students, who the day I met them, they just won the, um, the, the first direct banking account. So I ended up writing all the sort of what's called the below the line copy, which is like the sort of the, um, the non-mass market stuff, the brochures, um, the, the, the sort of the web copy for forward publishing for two or three years, which was you know, just wonderful. It was kind of like the, the, the golden goose in a way. And um, and I, I did a lot of other freelance copywriting work as well. So that, that's really that's really where I started. And then I got very ha badly hit by the 1990-91 recession. Uh, and as the saying goes, I kind of came in from the cold and I went back into the corporate world, but this time as a bid writer for Ernst & Young. Uh, I mean, they were called Ernst Young then. They're, they're, they're now EY. They've sort of rebranded themselves. And for three years, I worked on, it was kind of brutal, but it was, we were doing kind of really brutal 90-hour weeks. 
uh, working on bids and tenders, really fast turnaround. But I tell you what, Mark, I learned such a lot about writing, particularly obviously about bid writing, which is the other thing that I do besides being um, a writing skills trainer. I'm also a bid consultant and, and a bid writer. And in fact, earlier this year, I was working on a mega public sector bid worth billions um, with six other writers. Um, so Ernst & Young was, even though it was kind of corporate, I learnt a huge amount. And then after three years there in bids and tenders, because, you know, thank goodness they offered you time off in lieu. So if you if you worked more than 60 hours a week, you got the next couple of days off, which you really needed. Because otherwise, you know, I'd have been completely burnt out because we were, I mean, the number of all nighters I pulled, you know, I, I kind of lost count. But as I say, it was amazing learning for me. And on the, on the back of that experience, I ended up writing my first book, which is called Winner Takes All, uh, Seven and a Half Principles for Winning More Bids, Tenders and Proposals. And so I did that for three years. And then I moved, moved sideways within Ernst & Young to training. Because I, I suppose, if you like, uh, there are three uh, there are three things in my life that I love. Uh, one is writing. Uh, this the other is learning, uh, which was from Christopher Trevor Roberts, the you know the amazing teacher. And the third is teaching. So in a way, what I'm doing now by showing people how to write with impact is combining certainly two and, and probably all three. Um, so anyway, just to sort of end the end, the sort of bring you up to, to date, as it were. I, I I sort of cut my teeth on the training, the training field with Ernst and Young uh, for three years, and then I moved across to PwC, Price Coopers, which wasn't which wasn't so enjoyable. I did that for a couple of years, and then they offered me voluntary redundancy, which I grabbed with both hands, and that was in two thousand and two, and I set up my own business. Uh, and in 2004, I hooked up with a, an amazing writer called Andy Maslin, and for and we co-founded my present company, Write for Results. Andy and I worked together for eight years, and parted on very good on very good terms. Uh, basically, he wasn't he wasn't as motivated to train as I was. He also wanted to go off and write novels, uh, which is exactly what he's done. And he very kindly handed the the, the company. Uh, I sort of I bought his share of the company, so now I own it, lock, stock, and barrel, right for results. And that's what Amazing. I've been doing for seventeen years. Great journey, and Scott, mm. you've come from a really creative. Even from the age of six, you had a really imaginative mind mm. and you've had some of the best education that has really propelled you yeah. into the world of writing. Mm. Um, it's a really interesting background that you have. Can you just share a little bit about your business now and how you support your clients, Scott? Sure. Yeah, no, very, very happy to, Mark. Um so uh, my business is called Write for Results, and essentially it offers three services. The core service and the one that, if I'm honest, uh, I'm more in love with than, than, and than the other two. That's not to say that, that I neglect them, but my core business is training uh, professionals in how to write with impact. Uh, so... I show professional, technical professionals, lawyers, accountants, engineers, consultants, uh, as you said in your introduction, Mark, I show them how to find their voice, uh, write human with a capital H, uh, and get the results they want from the words that they write. And that I've been doing since 2004. Uh, and in that time, I've trained over 5,000 uh, professionals, technical professionals in writing with impact. The other two services that I offer, uh, I mentioned one a few minutes ago, which is bid writing and consulting. Uh, so I can either help you write uh, a must win bid, tender, pitch or proposal, or I can work alongside your team um, very much in a hands on role, advising, writing, editing basically taking the bid to the next level of quality uh, so that's bid bid my bid services uh, 
And then the, ser- the third service I, I've, I offer is an interesting one. I sort of fell upon it by accident. And I call it nail your value proposition and elevator pitch. And what I mean by value proposition is helping you as the business owner to nail your unique offer of value to the market, to the world. And related to that, I then, once we've done that, I then help you to articulate that in a 30 second and a 60 second elevator pitch. Because the pitch is a very important yeah. and powerful as well, Scott. It, it's so important, Mark. You know, I mean, I, I could literally um, count on the fingers of one hand only the number of business owners, you know, bar the ones that I've worked with, the number of business owners who I consider have really nailed their elevator pitch yes. such that it's become kind of part of them. They've internalized it. And it's clear and concise and compelling. And and I think there's a major, there's a major competitive problem in this country. As you and I both know, Mark, that the SMEs, you know, owner managed businesses, small and medium sized enterprise, enterprises are the engine room of the UK economy. And if you haven't nailed your value proposition and elevator pitch, I almost consider you're not yet properly in business. I think it's as important as that. So even though I haven't done a lot of that work, I mean, I've got two amazing clients at the moment helping them, you know, do that. Uh, I think it's a really vital, a really vital service. But the, but the core business is um, is training professionals in writing skills. Amazing. It's such a vital part to grow and expand a business that your copy, your writing is really, really top, top notch. Scott, we're coming up to a commercial break now, so please stay where you are. We've got lots more questions to get through, so I'll be back with you shortly. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for part one of Brilliance Business TV. Join us after the commercial break when we will be discussing more of the importance of getting our writing skills done correctly. Join us after the commercial break. Welcome back to Brilliance Business TV. Before the commercial break, Scott shared his journey of being a creative, imaginative child that led him into some of the best education here in the UK. That has led him on a path to supporting people with their writing, their copy. Scott, welcome back to Brilliance Business TV. Thanks, Mark. Great to be here. So let's dig deep in, Scott. Why is the ability to write well so, so important in today's modern world? Well, that's, uh, Mark, that's a huge question. Um, there, and there are many different ways I could answer that. I think what I'd say is that in the last, you know, if, if we if we look at um the number of channels and opportunities and media um that we can use to communicate with the world essentially at the flick of a switch or the the click of a uh, the click of a mouse a mouse click um i think it's no exaggeration to say that in the last 10 years more words have been written 
in the world than in the previous 1,000. If you consider the number of tweets, blogs, books, yes. e-books, articles, uh, speeches which need to be written, um, reports, you know, the, the, the stories, plays, um, you, you name I mean, the list is endless. Um, so whether we like it or not, I believe that when we're in business, we are all writers or we need to yes. be writers. Because the written word, you know, when you're posting, when you're posting an article on LinkedIn or you're writing your LinkedIn profile or you're posting something on Facebook or you're commenting on on something, what we all crave and me very much included is engagement. Um, And if you get no engagement or you don't get as much engagement from your readers as you want, then in a way, all the time and energy and the brain calories that you've invested are for naught. It's all a waste. So therefore, to engage your reader, you need three things, I believe. You need great content. Content is king. Um, It needs to be, you need clarity. It needs to be so clear that your reader gets it in one go. So I'm clear about my definition of clarity. And then the third element, which is really missing, I think it's the missing link personally in B2B writing particularly is personality. Yes. I think post COVID we're living in a world where people crave authenticity, honesty, humility, connection. We crave connect connection with people. That's why lockdowns are so damaging because we, you know, we, we lose connection. Although having said that, virtual connection, as you and I have got, uh, is is an absolute blessing. So for me, those are the three elements of great writing, content, clarity and personality. So we we need to use our words as ambassadors for us and our brand and for us as as people as well. Um, So that that's one reason why writing is so important. The second thing I'd say, what, why does writing matter, um, is because so often that's all people have to go on. Yes. Um, if, if they don't have the opportunity uh, or the privilege of meeting you in person or, or virtually, and they're just reading your book or your ebook or a blog or an article, those little words, those black marks on, on white ground, are the only things that they have by you know by which to judge you, and they need to resonate and ring true for them. Uh, so that's the second reason. And I give a third reason why writing matters is because I think, and this is something I've I'm really being increasingly drawn to, which is that I think there's a very strong therapeutic element to writing. Well, um, I've recently worked with a couple of people. Uh, one of whom was a drug addict, and I helped her to write her book. And I know for a fact that helping her put down on paper and express and articulate and externalise the trauma inside her was very much part of her therapy. Just so, so important. Everything you have said is so, so true, Scott. The written word, how you convey your message to the world to get engagement as well. It's more important than ever with how crowded social media is that we're conveying our messages correctly. You work with a lot of professionals. What are some mm. of the common issues and problems that they face with their mm. writing, Scott? Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, Mark, how long have you got? You know, but um, uh, there are a lot of them. In fact, I've uh, a couple of years ago, I, I created an online writing skills program uh, called Write for Results Online. And Write for Results Online tackles what I call the nasty nine. And those are the nine most common writing issues that just come up time and again. Uh, Now, I'm going to share with you three of those nine that I think are the most common ones, uh, if if that makes sense. So number one, uh, I, I think this is the number one writing issue, 
is actually what I call weeing all over the reader. And what I mean by that is, you know, we, if they're writing about themselves or their organisation, they'll say, uh, we're firm ABC, we're great at this, we've done that, we work with people like this, we've achieved this in the last five years, we've just moved premises, we've just won a huge award. It's all about them, not the reader. Yes. I call that weeing all over the reader, and it's obviously very, very rude. So that is that is issue number one. I also call it being writer centric as opposed to being reader centric. Yes. The reason why that's an issue is because if you ask your reader, who are you more interested in, yourself or the writer? And they will nine times out of 10, they will say themselves. I'm more interested in myself as the reader. So therefore, if you are writer centric and they are reader centric, you're basically there's a disconnect between the, the words they're reading and, and, and themselves and their expectations, if that makes sense. Totally. So uh, technique number one in my rhetorical toolkit, which is 15 techniques, is right for your reader. So it's about being reader centric, not writer centric. So that that's issue number one. Issue number number two is incredibly common, and that is what I call www. Not not the World Wide Web, but waffle wordiness and wind. It's basically using fifteen words where five would do. Yes, uh, you know, but, but, but it's it's verbosity. It's being prolix. It's being wordy. It's waffle wordiness and wind. And the reason why that matters is because you're you're likely to lose your reader. If your reader, if you're making your reader work really hard to get your meaning, harder than they may want to, because most readers want to get the message really quickly and then move on, then you're likely to lose your reader. And when we lose our reader, we've failed as communicators. I'm sure you'll agree. That's issue number two. Yes. Issue number three is a bit of a tie between a, a number of them. But I'm going to go for this one, which is um, passivitis, which is, I'll explain what I mean by that. It's overuse of the passive voice. And as the clue's in the name, the pass, passive voice, basically a sentence is either in the active or the passive voice. Uh, so I'll give an example of what I mean. Um, Sam wrote the memo is in the active voice. Sam is the subject. He or she wrote the memo. Wrote is the past tense of the verb to write. And the memo is the object. So what we've got there is known as a declarative sentence. Subject, verb, object. That's the active voice. The beauty of the active voice is it forces you to state who is doing what to whom. Clear, simple and direct. The trouble is a lot of B2B writers unconsciously, in other words, they're not aware that they're doing this, unconsciously write in the passive voice. I don't know where they've got this from. Uh, maybe it's from university. I'm not sure. But that sentence then becomes the memo was written by Sam. That's the passive voice. And you can hear the difference. It's more complicated. It's less direct, it's less dynamic, it's passive, and it's longer. The memo was written by Sam, as opposed to Sam wrote the memo. So the um, passivitis, overuse of the passive voice, which I refer to as the carbon monoxide of your writing, because it just, it kind of sucks the life out of your writing, because it's passive, and it's not dynamic, it's not active. So those are the three. Um, weeing all over your reader, um, uh, waffle wordiness and wind and, and passivitis are the three really big ones. But And there, then there are another six, uh, but we haven't got time to go into all those. I particularly like the we one that you mentioned, mm. and I see this on social media quite a lot, but mm. it's not we. Sometimes it's I yeah. as well. Yeah. So it's someone, I do this, I mm. do that. Yeah. 
which is very similar to we and I make a conscious effort when I'm doing posts to switch it to a you or mm. a your so I'm talking directly to the the audience rather than talking about I or we which is me so I particularly like that one it's very very um it resonates impactful. with impactful it really yeah. makes a difference yeah, to sure. the way that people perceive what you're writing about mm. Tell us a little bit about Rhetorica, your book, and also your past, your podcast, The Writing Guy sure. as well, Scott. Okay. Um, I, I don't know whether this is going to be inverted on people's screens, but this is what the, um, this is what the book looks like. Uh, Rhetorica, a toolkit of 21 uh, everyday writing techniques. Um, so I, I decided in 2017 um, that, it, that I wanted to write a book about writing. And um, by then I'd identified, in fact, I've identified about 40 persuasive writing techniques, but that, that's an unmanageable number. So I thought the 21, you know, odd numbers have been shown to be more memorable, by the way, than even numbers. So I, I've chose 21. And essentially I split those 21 um, in the book uh, between planning techniques drafting techniques and editing techniques and that by the way mark is probably really important to emphasize that in my training uh, I, the, one of the very first things i say is i say are you aware of the three steps of the writing process and people say well no not really and i say well they're really simple but if you're not doing them you're in trouble and they are planning drafting which is the technical term for writing and then editing and checking and that's really important because I see most business writers diving straight into drafting, no planning. And they then they wonder why halfway through their first draft, they go, oh, no, this is all wrong. Screw it up. Start again. Throw it in the bin. It's a rewrite. It's a disaster. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to write a book about writing that would really help people make it very easy in a step by step way to help people improve their writing. So that's Rhetorica. And um, uh, yeah, it's available on Amazon. I've had uh, every single review so far has been five stars. And I was reading some of the reviews the other day and, and um, they're just amazing. So, uh, somebody's um, said that they should they, that they thought my book should be in every single sixth form in the land, uh, which was kind of <laughs> wow. Yes, uh, that was incredible. But now since then, Mark, if I could just if we have time for me to share this uh, with your with your viewers, literally in the last probably three months, I've I've whittled those 21 techniques down to 15. And though these are 15 techniques that are guaranteed, so guaranteed that if it doesn't work, I'll give you all your money back. They are guaranteed to improve your writing. And you can prove that to yourself by showing the increase in readability using the readability stats in Word. So there are five planning, five drafting and five editing techniques captured neatly in, in three five letter acronyms, which are STORM, SCOT and STRAP. And if we have time, I'm happy to take you through what they stand for. But 15 writing techniques. And Give so me that, your top three. Yeah. Give me your top three out of them, Scott. Um, OK, well, the, the top three, I mean, again, has to be right for your reader. Although yes, this time yes. I'm going to go into even more detail as to why that matters. But let me look, because I've already spoken about that. Let me give you another one, which is structure for maximum impact when i review other people's writing often it's not the problem is not the language it's the structure or the lack of structure it just doesn't hang together and that's why i say that i'm very fond of saying structure is more important than language because if no matter how beautifully you write if it's ill structured and your right your reader doesn't know where they are where they've been where they're going they're going to give up they're going to stop reading so structure your your uh, your writing your doc, your document. Um, let me share with you a drafting one, uh, which is um, cure nounitis, 
which is the overuse of nouns uh, with verbitis. What I mean by that is use more verbs than nouns. Now, nouns, take you back to school, if you don't mind for a moment. A noun is a naming word and it just sits there naming stuff. Yes. It doesn't move your writing along. What's a verb? A verb is a word of action and doing. So therefore, it just stands to reason that the more verbs you use in your writing, the more vigorous and dynamic it's going to be. So uh, cure nounitis with verbitis is another drafting technique. And then the, the third technique I'll share with you is from editing and checking your work. And it's my favourite. Um, it's for me, it's the princess, it's the queen, it's the dauphin of um, of editing and checking. And it's so simple, Mark. This technique is so of all my techniques, the most simple. Do you know what it is? Tell it's, us. It's read your writing out loud. Nobody oh. does it except professional uh, professional writers. The reason it's so brilliant and so effective is it slows us down, it allows us to hear the sound and the rhythm and the tone and the cadence of our writing, and it allows us to assess and hear how it will sound to our reader. Read your writing out loud. It's so simple and so effective. Great tips. And you have another... 12 of those you've mm. only give us three out yeah. of the 15 so mm. everyone if you would like more tips more wisdom from mm -hmm. scott sign up to his newsletter at www.writeforresults.com that's writeforresults.com writeforresults.com just tell us a little bit about your podcast the writing guy scott uh, yeah, ha happy to do that. So inspired by a fellow masterminder um, called Nick Warren, who's one of the best writers I've ever come across and who has now become uh, become a friend, which is lovely. Nick decided a couple of years ago he was going to do a daily podcast on storytelling. He he uh, he basically helps people to to tell their story in business. And um, he's now on podcast 658. So I decided this year that I would do my daily podcast and I started on the 1st of January. I'm not as diligent as Nick, but I've just recorded uh, episode 175 uh, today. That's it's called The Rock. It's still a lot. I mean, I've missed a couple of weeks, so kind of, you know, slap wrists, but... Um, uh, basically, it's called The Writing Guy Podcast. It's available on Spotify and Anchor. A N C H O R dot F M. And it's really, to be honest with you, Mark, is it an indulgence? Basically, it I decide on the day what I'm going to write, what I'm going to speak about. Uh, but it's anything to do with writing, language, or the written word. Oh, that, yeah. that ranges that sorry, that ranges from uh looking at Shakespearean meter and iambic pentameter to poetry, to looking at the the origin of particular words. Uh, yesterday, actually, I did a bit of a risque one. Uh, well, my wife thought it was risque, where I looked at the origin of swear words uh, in the light of a study that had just been published on swear words in English. Um, but I also talk about how to write a powerful bid. Uh, I share some of a lot of almost all my writing techniques off and on. Uh, and so it's a really broad, it's a broad church. It's a very Catholic sort of view on anything to do with the written word. I would encourage everyone to check out Scott's amazing podcast, The Writing Guy. Scott, we have run out of time. I really enjoyed having a conversation with you, really learning about your past, your background and how you help your clients. I'd encourage everyone to check out Scott Kayser at writeforresource.com. Scott, thank you so much for coming on to the Brilliance Business TV show. I have really enjoyed having a conversation with you. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Mark. It's been a... 
Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.